Hi, it's a great pleasure to be here today. Thank you so much for, for inviting me. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, a, a piece of work which I think has a lot of parallels with what you were just talking about. Um, which is uh, a project which has its evolution 20 years or so ago when I first uh, came to UCL and uh, I did a piece of research called The Value of Urban Design and that was just a three month project um, but I'm sort of known for this project back home in the UK and uh, every, every so often I get emails from people in local authorities saying I've got this project and, and the, the politicians or the developers don't believe me that we should have good quality urban design how can I prove it? And I got fed up with writing long emails to, to these people saying yeah, look at this piece of evidence look at this piece of evidence you know it's all here so I thought let's put it all together in a wick um, and uh, that was the sort of evolution of, of what I'm going to talk about today. Um, and a subsequent, uh, more recent thing that we produced, and I've got some copies here if anybody's interested, called Place Value and the Ladder of Place Quality. Now, as we know, uh, urban places are made up of uh, buildings and streets and spaces and landscape and a uh, uh, community of user, users and, and, and land uses and so forth. Uh, they come in great variety. There's great richness even in single uh, settlements. There's a huge richness and variety of different uh, types of places. Um, but our individual experience of those places, of course, varies hugely depending on uh, who we are, on our, on our background, on, on our experience, on, on, on where we uh, live, uh, and, 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 and so forth. And, of course, whether we happen to be living in places of prosperity or, or places of poverty. That said, the quality of place impacts hugely in many different ways on our lives. It impacts on our health and well-being. It impacts on the economic opportunities and social opportunities available to us as, as individuals. Uh, it impacts on our, on our collective togetherness and, 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 and empowerment. Uh, the place quality impacts on things, very tangible things like pollution and, 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 and emissions. And of course, its profound place is profoundly political in many different ways. Place quality, I have argued for many years, adds value. But what the wiki tried to do is to say, right, well, you don't need to necessarily believe me, or perhaps all of us in the room are already convinced about the fact that it's important to build uh, and manage high quality places, but in fact there's a lot of evidence underpinning those assertions, a lot of empirical evidence, which we could express as different facts, which have been brought together in the wiki, and I think that's the parallels with what, what you're trying to do, uh, to, uh, to do in your uh, database. So, putting this wiki together, I started to think about, well, what do we mean by value and what do we mean by quality? Well, value is often taken to mean, um, or, or often discussed in quite narrow economic terms, taken to mean this sort of economic value of something. But value has a sort of broader meaning to do with the significance or benefit derived from something which is being valued. Another way of thinking about it is, the degree to which different qualities of the built environment impact either positively or negatively on different policy priorities. That's the way that the wiki uh, identified or, or tried to conceptualize value. In other words, to what extent does the quality of the place impact on the sort of big ticket policy priorities? society, health, environment, economy. These are the things which elections are won and lost on, not on the built environment, but the built environment impacts on those things. No matter where we are, in Stockholm or Reykjavik or New York or London, these are the things which win or lose elections. And Brexit, of course, but we don't mention that. So, what then might we mean by place quality, the other side of the coin? Well, 
the bits of evidence, the bits of empirical work that we brought together in the wiki take many different views on what we might mean by quality. Often they take quite narrow, quite small aspects of the built environment. Street trees, or the presence of cul-de-sacs, or, or, or the presence of, of fast food joints in, 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 in the street. And, and they look at what impact that has on maybe the social uh, outcomes or economic outcomes of place. So another way of thinking about quality is that which returns the greatest value to its users. In other words, places that allow people to lead healthy lifestyles, lifestyles that, allow, that are socially rich, lifestyles that are economically productive and lifestyles that touch lightly on the environment. Places that deliver on those qualities, uh, on, on that type of value, you could say are high quality places. And that was the sort of core idea, if you like, at the heart of the, uh, of, of the wiki, that place quality delivers place value or influences place value in those different areas, health, social, economic, environment. But place value we can use to define what we mean by place quality. In other words, there's a virtuous circle, a virtuous loop between value and quality. So the wiki brought together, uh, originally when we started our search, there's a huge number of, uh, of, of records that we found that link different aspects together, uh, over 13,000. We very quickly narrowed it down um, to just 271 empirical studies, um, which, are, which form the heart of, of the wiki. Um, and so just 2% of the original records, there was a lot of duplication in those records. A lot of it was just uh, not, not uh, robust research and so forth. So we were quickly able to reduce that down. And the wiki since has, has carried on uh, building. A wiki, of course, as you know, is a, a website that anybody can add to uh, that, that sum total of the evidence on there, the famous wiki being Wikipedia. The wiki classifies the evidence, just like your database, in different ways. These are, these are the ways that the wiki happens to classify under these big ticket policy uh, arenas. Um, and uh, if you, you probably can't read that, um, but uh, if you uh, start by, if looking at the evidence under each of those uh, 23 or so different, uh, different areas, then you can start to draw conclusions about in what way does better quality places add value? Value. So just for some examples, uh, better quality place, there's a lot of evidence that suggests that better quality places lead to better mental health, uh, less stress, more psychological restfulness, reduced depression, anxiety, anger, reduced psychosis, for example. Equally, there's a lot of evidence around the relationship between the quality of the built environment and crime, leads to lower rates of crime, higher quality places, reduced burglary from homes, lower street crime, less fear of crime, and so forth. On the, on the economy, uh, there's a lot of evidence that links different aspects of quality with uh, property values. So, for example, a lot of evidence links, li uh, li uh, relates to the uplift in the office sector um, and uh, re reduced vacancy and depreciation from a better quality built environment. And finally, there's a lot of evidence that links uh, different aspects of quality with reduced energy use uh, and, and carbon emissions. So underpinning each of these state statements is a lot of empirical studies. Uh, and if you're interested in, in, in the sort of uh, the detail of that, then this paper, which is the title of the, of the talk, which I'm supposed to be giving today, um, is in the Journal of Urban Design. But with the remainder of the time I've got, what I want to focus on is what does this collective evidence say about the sort of places that we should be building or not building? Well, what it says is that these are the places that we shouldn't be building. Um, in other words, sprawling, suburban, disconnected places, uh, mono-use places, uh, places without greenery dominated by tarmac and so forth. The sort of places we should be building are these sort of places, very crudely, a sort of, a, a, a sort of medium density, uh, street-based, connected into the surroundings, gre with greenery, a mix of uses, uh, and, uh, and so forth. Nothing we didn't already know here. The point is, 
that there's lots of empirical evidence that allows us to be much more confident in the way that we make those assertions if we choose to use it. And so what we did in this, uh, this, this publication here, uh, place value and the bladder of place quality, is try to articulate this in a way that was very easy for policymakers um, and uh, built environment professionals to, to grasp and understand. So we framed it in terms of a ladder of place quality. And what it says is there are certain qualities which there's so much empirical evidence there to say that we should be confident to say we should absolutely avoid certain sort of qualities in the built environment. Very strong negative incomes we can confidently predict. These are the sorts of qualities. Car dependent, extensive suburbanization, absence of green space. Sometimes quite detailed things like the, the presence of rear parking courts or segregated parking is very bad. Uh, poor maintenance and dilapidation and so forth. There's these certain qualities that absolutely we need to avoid because they're bad for us. They're bad for our health, they're bad for society, they're bad for the economy, um, and they're bad for the environment. These sorts of qualities. Then there's a set of qualities where the evidence is a bit unequivocal. Uh, there's evidence that points in both directions or there's just not enough evidence to be really clear about what, what, what the, these sort of qualities mean. Uh, and these are those types of qualities. For example, advocating one architectural style over another. There's different evidence that points in different directions on a question like that. Higher versus lower density uh, development. Uh, living at, at living at high, in high rises, for example. There's different evidence that points in different directions. It can be good depending on who you are. So we need to be careful about being too prescriptive on those sorts of qualities. Then there's a set of qualities where there's a good range of evidence that positive outcomes uh, will ensue. Uh, these sorts of qualities, uh, they tend to be the qualities that are a little bit more intangible, uh, which is why the evidence isn't as robust as the, uh, the qualities right at the top of the ladder. But nevertheless, we can be confident in saying that we should aspire to these sort of qualities in the built environment. They range from things like sense of place down to architectural beauty. Um, not style, but beauty. So there's a range of factors that we can be reasonably confident about. And then finally, right at the top of the ladder, there's a set of qualities where the empirical evidence is so overwhelming that again, we can say we should absolutely require these sorts of qualities in new development. Because uh, the evidence is very strong. Greenness, a mix of uses, low levels of traffic, walkability, compact and coherent patterns of development, bikeability, public transport connectivity. The sorts of things that many of us have been talking about for years as being, you know, key prerequisites for good quality urban design. The point is that when faced with a policymaker who's been told that they, you know, the, the, the developer isn't interested because it's not going to deliver on their particular requirements, they can go back and say, well, actually, for society, the economy, the environment, and for our health, these qualities really matter. So we must insist on them. And as I say, we express that in this ladder. So three final very brief conclusions. The first is that 99% of the evidence we looked at points directly in, in terms of this relationship between quality and value. The evidence really is overwhelming. That better place quality adds value economically, socially, in the, as regards health and environmental outcomes. And it does so globally universally for all of us, no matter what our social economic background. But there's a warning. Benefits often flow differentially to different stakeholders and over different time horizons. Short-term profits to developers versus long-term health benefits to society, for example, or those are not easy things to balance, this question of time, the temporal factor. Sometimes they do not accrue to those who paid for them in the first place. Take the example of a street tree. A street tree paid for by a developer 
a row of street trees in a new development, that may, make 20 years, to, may take 20 years to mature, the developer doesn't get any benefit from that, perhaps even the person who bought the house in the first place doesn't get any benefit from that, the benefit is somewhere down the line. Finally, the evidence is so strong that this shouldn't be regarded as a luxury, only to be afforded when things are good, which we tend to do back home. We start talking about place quality when the economy is doing well and when the economy is not doing so well, we quickly forget it and, and we just build anything. Um, so important to our basic well-being that it should be the expectation of all and it should be the expectation uh, everywhere. So, read the report, climb the ladder. Thank you very much.